Hello everyone, Genesis here with another Genesis Tips and Tricks video. Today we'll be looking at the first gameplay on Pitfall that I've released on my channel, and it will be, of course, the new game type, Ricochet. Now, Ricochet is available for all people to play, and off the start here, I just want to explain a few things to help you understand the map a little bit better. Rockets always spawn in Rocket Tunnel or Long Haul at the beginning of the game. This is called our green box, this little box area. And this is the center hallway, or green hallway, and this is where the ball spawns. This is their green box. Um, coming over, both sides have these towers. The snipe spawns in the bottom of both towers, so this is S1, Sniper 1, and the top floor is S2, or Sniper 2. You have a lift into the towers from there. And of course, in this central area right over here, you have where the sword will spawn inside of this room in here. Okay? Also, there's this cool little drop down. You can drop down and then push straight up to the sword. Now, I'd like to point out that the ball can spawn randomly here, <clears throat> here, and here during the game. But at the beginning of the game, the ball always spawns in the very central green tunnel. Now, off the start here, you really want to angle your nades so that you hit this general area of the map. So off the spawn here, I'm going to try to do that, but unfortunately the enemy player does end up grabbing those rockets and I end up dying. One of the major reasons I uploaded this film was because it was about 12 minutes long, and it really gives some good examples, like right here, of goalie. Uh, that's an interception. You're just, um, as soon as you spawn, you run for the front of your goal, and you're putting shots into it constantly, and the enemy player will freak out and throw the ball because they think they're about to die. And they are about to die, and they're not going to be able to throw it anyway. So you want a goalie. All right, here I'm lifting over. Not sure why I don't try to get the run in here. Um, as you probably know, um, running the ball into the enemy goal gets you 50 points, but throwing it in gets you 20 points. As you can tell, the ball respawned in this location. And I know that because of the heads-up display. It takes 10 seconds for the ball to respawn in one of those three locations I showed you at the beginning of the video. Now, it's really critical to watch your radar on a map like Pitfall because you never know who is at the end of that tunnel and you want to be pushing a tunnel with your teammates when there's no one there. I've played many more games of Ricochet past this film the point where I recorded this film. So I'm a lot more experienced at this map now. However, this gameplay was pretty good as we push over into the enemy base and my teammate is pushing up here. Unfortunately, he is not watching his radar as he would have al already noticed three enemy players over here. You should never push the sides. You should always try to just go straight into the enemy base. Yes, you can jump from green box to the enemy plat. Okay, immediately top from that. You can jump from the plat directly into green box, which you'll see me do many times. You want to go as straight a route as possible to the enemy goal, unless there's no possible other way. Now, of course, I'm pitfall pushing to the enemy's side like I did there will almost always result in a death. I'm not, this is not a perfect gameplay by any means, but it definitely proves a lot of the strategies that you can work on Ricochet. And another one of the problems I had with uploading Ricochet gameplay is that I don't, I don't mean to be rude, but a lot of people we played against in the Ricochet playlist and in the Ricochet DLC playlist when it first came out were 100% complete garbage. I really don't, I mean, frankly, they should go home and rethink their lives because I just don't think they understood the concept of the game type very well. Um, and while I'm not perfect here, I think I understood them a little bit better. So, so right here I want to back up and... As I come off my respawn, I charge forward here and expertly use my thruster pack. Now right here, I notice I'm being shot by two people because look how far my shields are down. I have no shields right now. So obviously I'm being fired upon by two people, okay? Which means I need to get out of here as fast as freaking possible. So I thruster pack forward to get out of the way and I'm able to regenerate my shield. I end up using the thruster pack two more times in a very good way. As this nade right here comes off the wall, right there as you see in front of me and I'm able to thruster pack away from that grenade and not die. I would have definitely died there if I had not used a thruster pack. Pushing into the enemy 
side in, into the enemy green box, actually. I am able to catch this guy off guard, get a quick melee, and brush your pack behind cover. Again, a really good use of the melee here. Now, I don't know why I drop into the enemy pit like I do right here. If this is the enemy pit, I just dropped into it um, because that gets me killed. I should have waited for my shields to regen in the enemy green box and then maybe push to uh, their platform or something of that nature. So I'm going to end up grabbing the ball here, trying to keep the ball alive, maybe get some sort of score, and I end up doing that. Um, to be blatantly honest, one of the best ways to aim the ball is to aim for the very, very back of the zone. You want to aim for this area. You don't really want to aim for the front part because that's where everyone's going to be goaling. You cannot, it's really hard to jump up, to jump up and intercept a ball when it's already going over your head and going to hit right here instead of at the very front of the goal. So you really want to be aiming for that back part of the goal. Aim up a little bit more than you might dare normally. Um, that's a really good um, advice for aiming the ball in general. And once again, pushing to the enemy side is almost going to completely guarantee my death. Now, that's why Ricochet, in terms of CSR, competitive skill ranking, is team-based. You increase your CSR through wins, not through individual score or performance. You get a pretty nice snipe here, but unfortunately, I end up reloading right here and end up getting blamed in the head. You never want to reload unless you're really low on ammo in your clip, especially if there's people near you. And I, and I, there are some times in this film with my battle rifle where I don't reload and it really, really helps me out and I get a really good triple kill later on in the game. Right here I want to um, briefly show you guys how I died there. Um, as I kill this guy, um, this player recognizes that I'm in the green box, so he immediately tosses a grenade at this wall, as you can see right here. He tosses the grenade at this wall, and it bounces off and hits straight at my feet. You can also do this from the other side of their plat, and I'd recommend putting the grenade about right here. It's a devastating grenade toss, and it really works with people in green box, as you can see right here. It just, just destroys me. And... I never even saw that coming. Definitely a good way to toss grenades. Now as I push to their side right here, I'm trying to make sure the ball stays on their side. And this is a good strategy the enemy team used here. Throwing the ball to the opposite side of the map. This really helps out. Notice how long this guy stays alive using the thruster pack there. He doesn't completely stay alive, but he's able to distract us for just a few more seconds as we try to dissuade. And as you can try as you can obviously see there, you can throw the ball to your teammates or into the goal using the left trigger like you do to normally throw grenades. And you can even bounce it off the floor. As long as your teammate catches it, it doesn't have to be in midair throughout the entire throw. Now, this is a questionable play on my team's part here. Pushing on the sword side of the map, specifically underneath, is not always a really good idea. It can end very badly, and thankfully I do end up trapping this guy as he comes up the lift and charges me. You never want to charge someone up the lift. It's an instant kill when you melee with the ball. And if you guys didn't know this already, wins in ricochet in your commendations count as oddball wins. That was kind of an interesting fact that I didn't know. Right here I have a terrible grenade toss around the map as I kill my teammate and the guy ends up mailing me and of course instantly kills me. Terrible play on my part. Um, definitely should think through that a little bit better. Really good BR across the map here, and I end up getting a really good triple kill as I do not reload until I kill a second person, reload, and then get the triple kill. This is generally what you want to do when reloading. If you see more dots in your radar that are definitely going to come around the corner and you're in a safe position, don't reload until you've pumped every single bullet to the enemy team. Here I grab the sword and get a few good kills with it. I'd say the sword is more useful in this map than some maps, and it definitely is worth picking up. Unfortunately, the enemy player is pushing to our side, and I'd like to um, really give a brief example of how we approach this. We are immediately going to nade where he's going to be, specifically right here. And it ends up working out, but as you can tell right here, when this guy comes around the corner, he dies but it still goes in. This counts as a 20-point throw. 
and it should really be noted here that it is a legitimate strategy to bum rush the enemy zone and die, but your character character's momentum throws the ball forward. As long as you didn't throw the ball, the momentum of your movement does carry the ball forward a few feet. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. Now here I do a great job of avoiding this rocket launcher guy who now has the rocket launcher. And at the end of this video, I would also like to mention I will go over a few advanced tips on ball handling. That actually sounded kind of strange, but that's what it is. Again, a really good use of the push to back getting behind cover here. Probably should have not charged out until my shields were full, but I realized that my team is in the enemy's base. And if you have a position like this, you want to go after it, um, because if you kill off the enemy ball carrier, you can get into their zone for 50 points immediately. And that's a really good idea, because they're all trapped on their side. However, I end up being really unfortunately nated. And please realize that what I was trying to do here as I jump up, is I was trying to thrust a pack onto that ledge, but I missed completely and get completely nated here. Really sorry about that. That just is unfortunate. Like that. Like I, what I just did right there with the thrust attack. That's what I was attempting to do on that ramp where I just died. This guy ends up embarrassing me. Um, I do not move back and forth. Notice how I start to freak out with my reticle left and right. I jumped way too early and I knew he had the extra shot on me and so I started flipping out with my reticle back and forth and the enemy team ends up getting a point because most likely because I died on over there on that side. Get a pretty good nade on this guy and be able to clean him up in the hallway here. Again a good nade but my or a good throw should I say but my teammate is right there ready to pick it up if the enemy team throws. We're actually 30 points behind right now so we really need to do something to get to the enemy side and they know it so it's a furious battle inside these tunnels as we try to push through one of the tunnels and make them weak so that we can go through. The best tunnel to push through is this one because you can easily just jump out left or right here and throw it straight into the goal and even if you don't you can jump across and run straight into the enemy enemy goal. However the team can enemy team can easily nade you so it's a really it's a really decision making process as to whether you run the ball in or throw it in. Right here, it's optimal that we get a few run-ins. Right here, I get completely demolished. Again, I push to the enemy side without any teammate support, which is not what you're supposed to do. As you can see, all my three of my teammates are right here. Now, when in this position, when you see the your teammates are all up here, and the enemy team has the ball, and they could possibly be pushing to your side, you do want to goalie. You do want to remain in this general location. And so, once I realize that my teammate is going to hang back here and goalie, as he just said, he did over the mic, then I realize I can push up. Always be communicating with your teammates on who is going to guard. If you're pushing the enemy side and you have the ball, there's no need for you to goalie. But if the enemy team has the ball, it is paramount that you have someone goalieing here. It's absolutely critical. If you don't, random throws across the map are very likely to happen, and unfortunately, it is likely to end the game very quickly. Now, I want you to notice how far this ball went when I threw it. It didn't go anywhere. That's because when you die while throwing the ball, the ball doesn't go anywhere, as you will see at the end of the video when I have a pretty good gaming example of this. Again, trying to goalie here. Get another pretty, pretty decent interception. It doesn't count as an interception because I hit the ground, but that's okay. Pushing to the enemy side here. I'm going to try to get a good throw, and I definitely do. Again, it's just about that situational awareness, knowing when the enemy team is down and pushed back into their base. And frankly, in a lot of games where the enemy team is a really good team, they will have a goalie there. And so it's critical that you kill them off. A little more whips of my reticle there. Now I believe, I believe we end up actually running this in, which is a really good play on Legolad's part. He has the ball right here, and um, no, actually we don't. That is later in the game. No, actually that is. So as you can see here, Legolad hung, hung back with the ball, and this is exactly what you want to do. You really want to do this because it's a really wise idea. So he's able to 
melee the rocket carrier as he's reloading, and then my teammate Lodging Whale kills this guy off with a sword, and it's a straight home free run into the enemy base. Now, the position we're in here is that they're going to respawn, most likely here or over here in this area. Okay, and as you can see, there's the enemy team respawn. The enemy team always respawns on their side. So if you're in their central base, they're going to respawn in the shotgun hallway or near or below their snipe tower on either side of where you are. That's pretty obvious. But however, we are all four alive right now and two of them are dead, which means if we get the next ball and can keep slaying them over and over again, we can really, really get quickly get another ball cap very, very quickly. Or a goal, should I say. And as you can see here, Lodging Whale is making sure I'm okay with the sword. And we end up going straight over into the enemy base. And he does as an expert rocket here. And again, once again, you're going to very likely die when you run in these goals and throw in. My enemy teammate does a great job of using the rocket style. Now here's a black screen. That's what a black screen looks like uh, in theater mode. A black screen is when the host quits or changes um, the game. Thank thankfully only one of the enemy players quit and the game ends pretty quickly from here. Now right here I throw the ball and I end up being completely embarrassed by this enemy player. Um, he's really good at using the battle rifle and that's the same guy who embarrassed me earlier in the game with his BR skills. Props the enemy player. Just really good shot under pressure. Again, my team—I know my teammates behind me are goalieing, so I don't even have to go look at that ball. I can keep pushing the tunnel, and that's really one of the reasons why you want to keep a goalie right here at all times when the enemy has the the ball, because you the other players don't need to be worrying about the goal. They need to be pushing constantly on these on these hallways and really keeping that line of defense solid against the enemy team. Now I'm moving back and forth here because I really don't want to be naded. It's really easily to be naded and you don't want to hang out by those fusion coils. I get the one shot call out on enemy side training. And I'm going to try to push up here a little bit. I think I end up, yes, I back down here, stay alive. Very good play on my part as I let my shield regain. Checking my teammates here, make sure they're not getting destroyed. And the enemy player again has a really good, really good strategy of throwing it to our side. I'd like to point out here that if you thrust your pack as you grab the ball, you will carry on the speed boost that the ball gives you. When you have the ball, you run like 10 to 20% faster. And so if you thrust your pack while, as you grab the ball, literally simultaneously as you have the ball, you'll use that speed boost that the ball gives you to thrust the pack even further. And as you can see there, my teammate just threw the ball to me. That's because he had a sword. I don't have any power weapons, so I need to be carrying the ball. Never carry the ball when you have a power weapon like the rocket launcher, sword, or sniper. Always give it to the enemy, a uh, teammate to carry it. Right here I get unfortunately mated, but we do end up running this in as I am letting my team clear out the enemy players. And of course, lodging well with the sword there, doing an excellent job. And we end up scoring it to win the game. It's 200 points to win. Now let's move on to a few short tips and tricks at the end. All right guys, so here's an example I wanted to show you, me running through Green Hall with the ball and trying to get a quick throw, but I don't quite make it. As you can see here, this guy assassinates me, but even though it looks like I threw the ball, I actually did not. I wanted to briefly show you what exactly happened here. And this is a tip for you guys. You need to throw the ball as soon as you get an opening right here. You need to throw it, angle a little more upwards than you would a frag grenade, of course. You need to throw it a little bit early. As you can see, I threw it here, but the ball doesn't actually leave my hand, and I get assassinated. When that occurs, the ball can fall off at a very random direction. As you can see, it falls off to the side here. And I just wanted to let you guys know that, because the ball does not have the buoyancy that you think it does. When you angle it off a surface, or when you get assassinated or killed while throwing the ball, it does not carry the momentum. In fact, the momentum of the, of the ball does not allow it to bounce off of surfaces very easily at all. You should try it out in a custom game to get really good at it. 
But guys, that's it. That's it for the video for today. If you like this sort of content where I slow down the game and give you guys in-depth tips and gameplay, uh, like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next capture or whatever end of recording. Peace, guys.